in the very beginning on the reservation, we couldn't leave the reservation. It's like a prison. We couldn't do many things. We were not allowed to eat the foods that our bodies were used to. So we only had to eat what America gave us, which was really bad food, very unhealthy. We got diabetes and heart disease and high blood pressure. It was also against the law to do our ceremonies and speak our language. So it was really a hard time. And little communities were established, and every community had a store, post office, and a church. And the church also served as the community building, too, like for weddings and feasts and stuff like that. And one day, in this one village, a wagon came. Because back then, everybody traveled in wagons. Nobody had cars. Everybody just had a team and wagon. I heard this, this wagon pulled in to this community, and they stopped at the, the community building. There were six people. They were really dressed weird. You couldn't see their faces. The women had scarves covering their faces. They wore long dresses and those bonnets, the kind of caps that women wore back in those days in the early 1900s, late 1800s. And the men wore coats, and everybody was wearing gloves, and the men had hats, and they also had like a scarf around their face too, so you couldn't see who they were. They went inside the community building, and so the people were wondering, who are they? I wonder what they're doing. And then they heard the singing, and that really made them feel good because before that, they couldn't do that because it was against the law. Gee, the song really sounded good. So they all went to the community building, and they were peeking in the windows. They're wondering, who is these guys? So they looked in there. They saw one man. He had a hand drum, and he was singing. And the woman was standing beside him, and she was singing too. And they were really singing a good song. But what really shocked them, was that they were dancing in a different way that they had never seen before. The men were on the right side, and the women were on the left, and the man and woman had their arms around each other, and the man's uh, left hand and the woman's right hand clasped like this, and then they were doing this kind of a two-step, and the beat was like boom, 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 like that. And they were moving to that. They would go three steps forward, two steps back. Three steps forward, two steps back. They kept doing that. So they're slowly going around the room. And then at the break, when the drum goes louder, boom, 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 you know, like that. They spin around in a circle. And then they were like, wow, this is really different. They never saw dancing like this. They were just in awe. And they really thought, gee, this is nice. Yeah, this is really nice. They people were just feeling good just to watch it. And then the couple that was singing, they went out the door. And the other two couples, they followed them, and they were still dancing like that. And then the couple that's singing, they got on the wagon. And then the other two couples, they got in the back of the wagon in the carriage. And then the wagon began to pull away. And the people were just astonished. They were like, wow, what is this? And then they said, who, who are they? They said, let's go stop them and find out. So they ran after them. And the wagon was just coming up on the hill. And when the people were getting close, the wagon stopped. And the people, suddenly, they just dropped to the floor of the wagon. And the people were really scared. What happened? It looked like they disappeared. So they ran over there really fast, and they just saw clothes on the floorboards of the wagon. And then they noticed that the clothes are moving, and they got scared. They said, what is this? Yeah, so somebody lifted up one of the clothes, and here a big jackrabbit jumped out. These are really big rabbits. Everybody got scared because it happened just fast. 
And next thing you know, five other jackrabbits jumped out of the wagon. They started to hop away really fast. They took off into the countryside. And the people were just astonished. Because see, in the Lakota way, rabbits are involved with medicine to make you happy. They're involved to make you feel good when you're feeling down. So people eat rabbits when they are going through a difficult time. And and I don't mean financially, I mean emotionally. That there's something in rabbit meat that it interacts with your body when you eat it. It's an energy that goes inside your body and it affects your emotions. And it boosts your emotions so you feel better. So rabbits are associated with good feeling medicine, feel good medicine. And see, at this time, this was a really hard time for Indians because it was basically against the law to be an Indian. It was heartbreaking because they couldn't do anything. And they saw this new dance. And so right away they got that hand drum and they got the wagon and horses and they steered it back to the community building. And one of the men who can sing really good, him and his wife took the position of that rabbit man and that rabbit woman that were singing. And they they stood there, and then the rest of the people, they formed into pairs, and they started doing that dance. And this couple, this man was a good singer, so he remembered the words that this, this rabbit couple were singing. So they started to do this, and they were doing this dance, and gee, they started to feel good. Yeah, they really started to feel good. Even though they're going through a shitty time and it's against the law to do all these things, it's basically against the law to be Lakota. This dance was making them feel good. Yeah, it really made them feel good. And so this was a medicine. This is how they got through a very difficult time with things and activities like this. See, the rabbits knew the people were hurting. So they came to give them this song and dance so the people will rejoice, so the people will feel good. Isn't that beautiful? That we get something as lovely as that. So these songs are really pretty. Usually the topic is love. Yeah. <laughs> And lots of times they're in English because in those days it was against the law. We couldn't speak our language, so they sang in English. (laughs) And it wasn't a ceremony, so then the authorities couldn't do anything. It wasn't a ceremony, they were singing in English. So technically, it wasn't breaking any laws. That's what the rabbits gave to us to help us get through that shitty time of the early 1900s. That's a really cool story. I really like that one. I heard that long time ago. I always like to tell it because even when I tell it, it makes me feel good too. (laughs) Oh, gosh. Anyway, go to YouTube and look for Rabbit Dance and you can see Stuff like that. It's really nice. When you do the dance, it's really cool. I always do that when I do seminars. After lunch, I always have the participants do that to wind down, to get ready for the afternoon session. Sometimes when the session's over for the day, they say, oh, can we do some rabbit dancing again? <laughs> so I say, sure. So I break it out and do it again yeah, because it makes them feel good too so if you could ever find the opportunity to do the rabbit dance i highly encourage you to do that even if you're home by yourself grab a stuffed animal and really dance yeah (laughs) seriously you'll feel better for it i swear it's just the way it is that's the power of the rabbit such a beautiful animal such beautiful power, such beautiful medicine, wonderful medicine to help in our way of life so that we may live, 
so that we may all live. This story that I just told you, as I stated earlier, happened in the early days of the reservation period. So we're talking about the time around the late 1800s. In many cultures, dancing is a very special way of communication because it affects a lot of things and we don't realize these things that we are missing until we have a restriction put in place or a law put in place that says no dancing. And this is taking a toll on the emotional well-being because dancing makes people feel good and for some people it feels good to watch people dancing. And therefore, dancing is a very important part of life. For example, in ancient Lakota culture, there was ceremonial dancing and there was social dancing. Dancing is part of the celebration of life. And when we cannot dance, it's going to affect us. It will make us sick. And in the story, you saw how in the Lakota people, at the beginning of the reservation, as I said, they were not allowed to speak their language in public. They were not allowed to sing in their language. They were not allowed to do any ceremonies from our culture. The story shows you how the Indian people got around the rules. They did the singing in English, and the dancing was very simple, but it was still dancing. It made people feel good. As I said in the story, people were really astonished because they never saw that kind of dancing before. And using the heartbeat type of drum beat, that really puts people in a good mood too. And maybe this is why our hearts beat like that. That's why the heart is associated with emotions. When we have this drumbeat in our life, it helps us to establish and maintain emotional well-being. It does play a role. Which, again, goes to show you how important dancing is to a society, to people, even to individuals. And even people who cannot dance, it's fun, it's medicinal to watch other people dance. And this is why in Lakota culture, when people are learning to powwow dance, the first instruction is you dance for the people, especially for the people who cannot dance because maybe they have a disability, maybe they have an illness, maybe they're sick and they're unable to, and maybe they want to, but they can't. So first of all, you dance for them. And for the elders. And then this encourages you to dance as good as you can, to be creative, to be enjoying the music and letting the body feel the music. And because of that, expressing dance movements, it's a communication. In the Lakota Natural Law of Generosity says that Communication is what you send out, and it's also how you interpret something. So it's outgoing and it's incoming. It goes two ways. So when it's a healthy communication, it comes back to you healthy. Actually, it comes back to you four times healthier. So when you're dancing in a really nice way, and people are watching you, well, you're making them feel good. They're enjoying watching you dancing, and it really soothes their soul. It really makes them feel happy. They're excited, and they're just having a good time. So you're making people feel good. Then it turns around, and it gets stronger, and it comes back to you. So you end up feeling really good too. And blessing will come to you as well. 
So you see, it's a really nice thing concerning dancing. And when we take that out of our way of life, we are really being affected in a big way, especially emotionally. So in this story, thanks to the rabbits, the Lakota people found a way to still dance in a cultural way, and they found a way to work around the rules that were imposed on them. And it wasn't breaking any laws. And we can do the same thing today. Turn your home into a disco. <laughs> you can dance at home. Or go on the balcony or patio or terrace and dance out there and let people watch you. <laughs> I think it was in Scotland or Ireland where there was this guy who put his drum set out by the street and he started to play drums for people. But <laughs> he took off all his clothes and started playing drums. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> I think of that and I really start cracking up. But see, look at what it did. He, he did that to be funny. And people who saw that were all starting to laugh and it made them feel good. See what I mean? This is how that works, this communication thing. And dancing is very similar too. You can dance at home. Turn your living room into a disco, put up a disco ball dress up in really nice clothes and nice shoes and put some good dancing music on and just dance the night away. <laughs> it's an idea, yeah, because it's so important. The dance is so important. The dance of life. To dance is to live. Just like to live is to learn is to love. It all fits together. Dance is an expression of life, it's an expression of learning, and it's an expression of love. So, the dance is a very important part of life. This is wonderful. Yeah.
To learn more about Lakota spirituality, I have written a book called Wichocha Otehike. This book also includes Lakota star knowledge information. All the videos that I make, which are about Lakota spirituality, Lakota star knowledge, and cultural information, are based on this book. This book costs 99 American dollars. This price includes the shipping cost. And to learn more about Lakota language, I have written a Lakota language book called Chante et Owoglake, Speaking from the Heart. And all my Lakota language videos are based on this book. This book costs 119 American dollars. This price includes the shipping cost. And new for 2024, I have a new book titled Czechia, which means pray. This book includes a CD which has traditional Lakota prayers and traditional spiritual songs. This book cost 49 American dollars, and this price includes the shipping cost. I also teach online, and I give spiritual consultations as well. If you are interested in any of my services and products, you can send payment via PayPal to my email address, which is Info at Wolakota7.com You can see the email address on the screen and it's also in the video description below. When you send your payment, please include your shipping address and your email address. I do have a Patreon account and you can see the link to that in the description below the video. Here you can also make donations to my channel and you can also buy my products, my books and my services concerning private Lakota language lessons and spiritual consultation or spiritual instruction. Again, you can see the Patreon link in the video description below. Huh. Lila Pilamaelo, thank you very much. In the Lakota way, everything is circular. As a result, we do not have a word for goodbye in the Lakota language. And so instead we say until next time, which in Lakota is Doksha Ake. And I will catch you in the next video.